right, this video is going to be uh, our final segment on TIG welder settings. We're using a Everlast Power TIG 250EX TIG inverter. And although a lot of uh, different inverters have a slightly different uh, twist on their settings, once you understand one, it's a lot easier to understand the rest. So what we've got in front of us here is a bunch of stuff we've already done some demonstrations on using that automatic welding lathe turntable just to show you uh, what the arc is like and what the bead is like, the effects of different settings on the bead without the influence of the operator because we had a stable tra uh, travel speed and a stable uh, torch standoff and all that kind of stuff. But So I've got this stuff. I've got aluminum, stainless steel, and steel in front of me, and that makes up most of everything that's welded. If you learn how to TIG weld uh, steel, stainless steel and aluminum, you can make the little uh, changes for the little nuances for things like inconel and titanium or cobalt alloys or monel or things like that. These are the main things, uh, and uh, th this is what we this is this is what you need to learn how to weld to to branch off into other things. So I've got some quarter inch aluminum tubing that's had some anodized coating on it. I've sanded most of it off, but there's still some crap on it. I've got some uh, fairly new uh, about fifty thousandths wall aluminum tubing here. I've got some stainless steel tubing, piece of steel, just some random odds and ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through. The settings and I'm going to bounce around a little bit. We're going to go fast. I'm going to talk as fast as I can. We're going to get bugs in our teeth. We're going to fly because we don't have much time. I know you won't watch a video much longer than nine or ten minutes, and I'm pushing it at that. But we got a lot of ground to cover here, so uh, we're going to get started. Uh, I've got a the TIG torch on an Everlast here. Well, what comes with them is this European style torch. It's got a built in uh, trigger on there, and I'm going to swap back and forth between foot pedal and trigger. Uh, just bounce back and forth and, and, uh, and, then, and then I'm going to pan a camera and we're going to show you the different settings for steel, how we swap it over to weld aluminum and uh, you know it ain't that hard but you know it, if, if you're new to it then you know you can just you can just watch this video, you bookmark it, watch as many times as you need if you've got a TIG welder and you're just getting started or you're going to buy a TIG welder whatever this video is uh, this video is for you. All right. So first off, we're going to weld uh, just some steel. So I've got some mild steel ER70S2 filler wire. That does not help us. I dropped it. All right. Okay. And I'm going to just run a bead on here. And I'm going to uh, talk about the uh, settings that, that, that are needed to, to run the bead on, on steel. So uh, steel is straight polarity, DCEN, DC electrode negative, because remember we talked about before, electrode negative, the electrode is negative and the uh, ground is positive and the current is going this way and that pinpoints the arc and lets us have a nice smooth pinpointed heat on steel and stainless steel and ink canal and things like that. A simple default setting for steel. Um, I'm going to use the foot pedal for right now, so I'm going to set it, I'm only using about a 50,000 piece of steel, so I'm going to set it at about 50, 50 amps, 50, 60 amps, and I'm going to have plenty. One amp per thousandths for steel is a good, is a good uh, rule of thumb. I'm not worried about arc force, I'm not worried about AC frequency or AC balance. Uh, those things are for something else. Arc force is for stick welding and these two are for welding aluminum on AC. I got the pulser bypassed off, so I'm not worried about this stuff. Okay, I do uh, I do need to be concerned about this. I, I'm gonna pretty much have this set on 2T for when I have the foot pedal plugged in. I want to be on DC because I'm on steel. Uh, I want to have my spot off and my TIG uh, HF versus lift versus stick. I want to have it on HF. I want to have a good uh, start without touching. It. All right, free flow. I like free flow, but I don't like much. Just about a second is all you need, so I just barely turned it up. Post flow is roughly uh, five to 10 seconds to keep our tungsten uh, shielded. At the very minimum, you need to keep your tungsten shielded. Up slope, my off, down slope, off, I'm doing all that with my foot pedal. You know, start amps, uh, on about 30% will be fine. I, our foot pedal is pretty much gonna bypass this stuff anyway. That's good, DC, okay. Because I'm going to weld all the way up to a quarter inch thick, I'm going to go ahead and bump this thing up 
bump my amperage up. And uh, it's not going to need a 1 amp per 1,250 amps. Just to run a bead on that would be a little bit more, way more than I need. I'm just going to run it on up to about 175 amps and work the rest with my foot pedal. All right, for aluminum, uh, I want to be on AC. I'm going to leave, the, leave everything else alone. Now I do have to be concerned with my AC frequency and my AC balance. I want it on maybe, you know, maybe uh, something like 100, and, 100 to 120 hertz, like I said before, is a good setting for all around, and about 65 on the AC balance. So uh, 65 on the percentage of, of electrode negative, that is, which would be about right here, roughly. That's going to give me, you know, point these things toward one another that's going to give me a really good setting all around for just about everything AC frequency roughly 100 AC balance 65 maybe 70 that's a good all-around setting and that's and nothing off to change anything else okay all I had to all I had to worry about when I swapped over to AC was just those two things wall aluminum rod filler rods a little bit big for that Let's see what we can do here with this big thick stuff without without a preheat or anything off or down on it here we go show you here it beats nothing to write home about don't get me wrong I'm not trying to brag on this but this the same setting worked on the 050 thousands uh, material worked fine on the 11 gauge eighth inch thick material quarter inch thick material you see how this stuff's kind of nasty I'm going to shift gears a little bit now instead of using the foot pedal I'm going to swap over to using the uh, trigger here a little bit. All I got to do is pull this out. Now you see this one's only got two poles in it. This is only a switch. I don't have to have all that other stuff. So what I'm going to do here, I'm on AC again, I'm just going to change change my amperage because it's, I don't have any amperage control. So I'm going to be welding on, let's just say I'm going to weld on that uh, 11 gauge. That's about all I'll do. So I, need, I know I'm going to need about 125 amps. I'm going to leave my AC frequency alone. I'm going to leave my AC balance alone because they were good settings. I'm going to 4T now because I'm using that, uh, I want a little upslope and downslope. And now that I'm using upslope and downslope, um, pre-flow stays the same, post-flow stays the same, upslope, I'm going to, I want it to give it a little time before I get my main amperage. And I want it to slope down. I want it to take a little time to slope down and taper off my amperage. Start amps, it's eighth inch thick, so I can use a pretty good hot amp, a pretty good hot arc, that is. End amps, I want it to taper off quite a bit. So I'll turn them down a little bit. All right, let's see what happens there. Right, now I've got the uh, switch hooked in. You should be able to hear the argon. Ready, here we go. Set the down slope a little bit. There we go. No amperage control, just the uh, torch switch. Plenty of cleaning action at uh, 65 on the AC balance and about 100 on the uh, hertz or frequency. 